But it was Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks taking down Zion Williamson and the New Orleans Pelicans. And obviously Zion has become one of the huge stories in the league, as has Luka, though not as big as Zion. And Luka, look, Luka is a much better player He's than awesome. Zion. Right. It's, it's awesome. not even and, – and as much as I like Zion, it's not close. Luka goes for 30 points, 17 rebounds, 10 assists on 9 of 20 shooting. He also got help from his man – Christoph Sporzing is 34 points. That's going to be a duo to watch going forward. Yeah. And uh, Zion had 21 points, not bad, and six rebounds in 35 minutes in the L. Here's what I want to throw out to you, Jonas. I've been thinking about this. Because Luka, as you just said, clearly the best player of the two by far. But there is far more buzz about Zion Williamson, about maybe even Trey Young, about maybe Ja Morant, about James Harden, Steph Curry, you know, and rightfully so because they Steph's won championships. But my what I want to ask you is this, because I think the international thing has something to do with it. Can an international player be the face of the NBA or maybe even any of our major three sports, football, baseball, or the NBA. I, we, we don't have to get to those, but there's never been an international face of those sports either. So, do, like, why is Zion getting so much more buzz? I know he dunks, but Luka is doing things no one's ever done. And I'm going to just throw it out there. And he's white. Like, yeah. that's great. Like, it, I asked Rob G this, and I, I want your true opinion on it. If Luka was a white American... How much more buzz would there be? Rob G said, what'd you say? He'd be the most popular player in the league? Oh, yeah. There'd be I don't know buzz. if he'd be the most popular yeah. player in the league, but he'd, no, be, would. he'd be huge. 100%. Yeah, that's absolutely fact. And and part of the reason, look, there is a – he's a European, so maybe – not that there's hesitation to wrap your arms around him, but there is sort of an, an affinity towards he's one of our own – they lean towards Zion. It's also the style of play. Like, which record gets talked about more? Is it, you know, Babe Ruth's home run record of, of 61 or whatever it was back in the day that, that Barry Bonds may or may not right. have passed it? Or Ted Williams hitting 406? Like, Babe one, one, one gets much more attention than the other right. one does. And you can argue the other one might be more difficult because no one's even come close to hitting what Ted Williams did that one season. But It's definitely more difficult. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And so I think people look at Zion, and when you're watching, it's more of a, a laid back. And I, and I was watching last night, and it was more of a laid back, just admiring of Luka. Just, you know, a pass in the paint. Just this little... This little move in the paint and a pass to Christoph Porzingis, and you know he'll hit a three. Was but it's that more the move he did on Drew Holiday? There was that was too, one like of the best it was, defenders in the league, and it looked like it was just so it, like he wasn't going fast. Right. It was almost like he just he lured him in and then exploded at just the right time to get to the basket, and he kicked it out, and they missed the shot. To where with Zion, every time they're on a two on one, and Lonzo balls the the other guy with the basketball, and Zion's coming down. Like, you almost anticipate there's going to be something crazy happening no here. Question. Every time he goes to the basket. So I just feel like there's this anticipation. It's You want to do a boxing comparison? Zion's Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury is Luka. Like, that's exactly what we watch. You just saw one's a better player, that's but the fair. other one the other one is so, so it's explosive. The dun- it's the dunking. Yes, 100%. I'll, I'll give you the dunking. I'll give you the dunking. It's, not, it's also the, the ability to get up in the air – the rebound he grabbed, there was a still shot of a rebound he grabbed over Dwight Howard, and it looked like he jumped five oh, feet yeah, in the air. It the was Lakers. crazy. It yeah, was crazy. Yeah. So I, I'll give you that. But to the bigger point, do you think an international player, Giannis, probably or arguably the best player in the world, before I think of Giannis, when I think of faces of the NBA, I think obviously LeBron, number one, Zion, Steph, KD, Harden, like all of these players, even maybe Kawhi, come to mind before Giannis. Yeah. And and now I'll, I'll say this about the this, – this throws a monkey wrench into my theory that maybe an international player can't be the face of the NBA. Joel Embiid. Because he's got that charisma. Yeah. 
He's on social media. He's captured the the minds of American fans. His team just isn't that good, and he's never healthy. Right. But if he were healthy, if he was as good as Giannis with his personality, I do think he could probably be the face of the league. But I just think in general, maybe because of the cultural barriers, maybe they don't feel as comfortable, you know, because of the language or just understanding the cultural norms. Like if I went to France and I was just, you know, some superstar athlete, I wouldn't know the culture. Yeah. So I probably wouldn't be as comfortable being myself in a whole different country. Maybe there's something to it with that. Yeah, and I do think the language, there is something to it. Joel Embiid is the one guy, if we're talking about who do you think could be the face of the league, more likely to be the face of the league, Joel Embiid or Giannis, I would say Joel Embiid as well too because of the personality. He's outgoing. He embraces social media. I've heard stories that Giannis He's not about like working out with guys in the offseason. Right. He's like, He's out to seek and destroy. Yep. And and good for him because I think you need different flavors. I think you need different things to offer personality-wise in the NBA. But as of right now, it's it's an American sport. I think deep down we prefer the American brand uh, and that what is presented to us and it would be fascinating if Luka were an American how much that would really change things because he's an amazing player to watch, but it's almost like this, oh, yeah, it, it's so cool, and he was doing all these great things in Europe, but, you know, it's like Trey Young. I, like, I would argue that Trey Young has gotten just as much notoriety and attention as maybe some international players, and Trey Young plays for a bad Hawks team, right. but his style, his flair, I think it's more embraced by the American fan. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great point, and um, it's interesting because it's something to watch over time. Because more these, I mean, when you think of the best young players in the league, and my Broussard's Fab Five in the second hour is going to be on the five players I would start a team with under twenty three okay. years old. But if you say go under twenty five and under, then you're talking about Giannis and Nikola Jokic maybe Ben Simmons, like so many of the players are international. So as more and more of the top players become international, it's going to be interesting to see, do they capture the fans' imaginations like the American players? And I'm going to say this about Zion, because you brought up the dunking, and that's clearly why we're all enthralled with Zion. But let's be honest, and maybe he's had one, but I'm just going to throw it out like this. Has he had one dunk since he's been in the NBA that just made everybody go crazy. No, 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 he hasn't. No, and he and there's been opportunities, and he hasn't. He hasn't gone up. In fact, I would argue the dunk LeBron had, where he he mimicked Kobe Bryant with the reverse dunk. That was a more I impressive. Would, I dunk. agree. I mean, uh, Jaylen some of Bra- LeBron's dunks over people. Jay- even this year, Jalen Brown did a 360. I think the uh, the other night yes. uh, on on a breakaway. So there's been better dunks. I think the most impressive thing about Zion is that his size. His ability – now, he did have some issues at times with Porzingis there, who's 7'3", which is understandable. And then the other kid, I can't even think of his name, um, met, he gave Zion some trouble in yeah. the paint. Yeah. Uh, like, but they're, for the most part, I'm surprised that he's able to – Kleber. Get the, get the boards that he gets, although he's not he, putting he's up not a high number. It, no. No, he's not killing it. But I'm surprised that he's able to get what he gets and still score at the basket because he doesn't have really a jump shot. Most of his work is done in the paint, no and he's still averaging 20 a game. So if, if he gets a jump shot, if somebody gets a hold of him and says, hey, man, if you could be a, a Rodney Rogers – I mean, that's a whole nother level to his game, which is going to be fascinating No, to watch. it'll be interesting to see how that develops because he's unstoppable in the paint. It's great. And he's not rebounding. You bring that up. Charles Barkley was shorter than Zion and a tremendous yeah. rebounder from day one. Larry Johnson was a really good rebounder until he hurt his back. Zion, had. now he's young. I'm not going to say he won't be. I think he will become a 10-11 rebound a game guy. But right now, last night he has six in 35 minutes. He's averaging below seven. And so for all his hops, that just shows you really that for he's playing off talent right 100%. now. 100%. It's not, he yeah. doesn't understand angles yet. He's not boxing out, obviously. He's never had to. And even you mentioned the post scoring, he's always going left. He spins left every single time and usually finishes with the left hand. So he's playing off raw talent. Once he does get the skills and maybe a better understanding, 
Yeah, sky's the limit. I mean, raw talent, and he's doing this already in the league. No, I, I just, I, I hope, I hope we don't see what has happened with Ben Simmons to where so many guys. I remember talking to Catino Mobley, and he said it's frustrating to watch a guy with that much ability and just not put in the time to work right. on a jump shot. It's frustrating, and I just hope Zion, if he puts the time in, and all of a sudden he's got a jump shot next year, we're going to see massive growth from him. Yeah, no question, no question. All right, can an international player be the face of the NBA? Let's go to Tory in Columbus, Georgia. You're on with the I Couple, Jonas in for Rob. Tory. Oh, yeah, man. What's up? What What's I was up? saying, I thank Giannis for getting in, man. He's it's he's the he might be the best player. He's not the face of the league. I think he can take it over after LeBron leaves, though. I do. I really do, Chris. And uh, what's up, Jonas Knox? What's up, man? How are you? Why you think good, he can? Man, you got to give us a reason. I think uh, I think he understands the game. I think he's dedicated to like promoting himself. Once he gets out there, once he gets more comfortable. All right, we will see. I, I'm skeptical. Yeah, I just I don't think he cares all that much. I really no, don't. And I look, agree. There, there's there's something to not caring, and because and because you don't care, people start to want to know. Okay, well, what's this all about? Like, I actually think Kawhi Leonard. There's a lot of parallels to Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch openly did not care Fair. about any of that stuff, and because of it. People actually grew towards him, and now he's speaking at universities, and he's doing commercials, and he's on Westworld. And so Kawhi's got this appeal to him to where it's a mystery. You don't really know a whole lot about him. As opposed to Giannis, he's not really interested in all that. He doesn't do it as as harshly as maybe a Kawhi or a Marshawn Lynch does, but I don't think there's the intrigue. Like Unlike Kawhi and Marshawn, he speaks. It's just not all that charismatic or interesting. Let's go to Sheldon in Utah. Sheldon, you're on with the odd couple. Hey, thanks for having me on. I uh, love the show, and I love when uh, Jonas fills in. One of my favorites to hear as well. Uh, thanks, man. But ma- mainly, uh, I want to say, like, I think it's up to the media, though, of who's going to be the face of the NBA, like, as far as who you guys showed the tension to. Um, Luka Doncic is putting up numbers that we haven't seen from a second-year player, but it seems like all we hear about is Zion. You know, that's, that's all we're seeing and showing, and uh, we're not seeing uh, the attention shown to these younger prospects that are putting in the numbers. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean. I, it's I, Chris I, Broussard's fault, man. I mean, he's the NBA media. It's Broussard's <laughs> fault. I mean, come on. Here now, we go. Look, winning is obviously <laughs> huge. But let's say with Giannis, even if he's winning champ, and I'm not saying he's a, you know, a terrible person. Now, he's actually a really nice guy. He speaks his mind. He's honest, you know, with the hardened comments. He was just being honest. So he's a he's a fine guy, no question. There's nothing deficient about him. I just don't think he's captured the imaginations. Luca hasn't captured the imaginations. Dirk was great, but never captured the imaginations of the American fan for it, the most part. It just it also the NBA is funny like this. Like James Harden, there's a lot of people who just don't like James Harden's style. Like there's a lot of people that a lot just, of people. I mean, it is it's and it's a a a big criticism. And it, to me, I, th- I think it's insane how how somebody comes along, scores 36 a game, which has been done by two other players in a season in NBA history, Wilt Chamberlain and Michael Jordan. And the reaction is, eh, it's kind of boring, though. How does that ha- how how I I don't the NBA is weird like the way we cover it we care more about the flash and the sizzle than sometimes the substance that's there it's just, it's a reality of how we cover basketball I'm with you in that I love Harden's game because I understand how hard it is to just beat somebody one on one he's like having that. a down year and he's scoring thirty five a game right it's right. crazy but it's it's just not I I get what people are saying that they they want more ball movement you know the way he. He gets calls that may not really be fouls. You know, he doesn't move a lot. He just dribbles in front of you and then shoots a three. What I like about it, like I said, the challenge of it. The challenge, it's like yes. to be in front of somebody who's in many cases more athletic than yep. you, shake them up with the dribble, and you're not really moving, and then be able to get the shot off in front of them with a step back or blow by them. It, it's it's incredibly <laughs> hard to do. Let's go to one more call before before the break. Marty in Kentucky. Marty, you're on with the eye couple. What's up, fellas? Hey, guys, in the name of Rob Parker, I've got to say that uh, 61 is Roger Maris. And um, um, Mark McGuire broke that. Him and Sammy Sosa both broke it. Then uh, then Bonds broke McGuire's record when he got 73. Just had to say that for Rob being the baseball guy. Uh, 
on the subject at hand, I just never see a uh, foreign player getting the hype that a that an American player that plays at a blue blood college program is going to get. I don't see it happen. What about Embiid? If Embiid lived up to the you know the promise that he has, you don't think he could capture? Now he did play at Kansas. Yeah. So maybe that makes him a little different. Well, it does make it helps that he that he was in the NCAA, but the fact that he's not in tune with American culture, it, it doesn't help, you know. And, and there's also you got to remember going back to college, Zion, the biggest game of the season on center stage, and he didn't really play all that long because his shoe exploded. <laughs> like there, like some of this stuff you can't script; it just happens. And it's, and it's, it's folklore. Yeah, now. and, and yeah. that that's that's what it is. It's Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson had moments where it wasn't scripted. He was going to break the bat over his knee. He just did it, and everyone took a step back and went, "Whoa, what the hell's that?" What's happening, y'all? It's Chris Broussard. I'm Rob Parker, and we are the, the Odd, Odd Couple. Couple. Check us out as often as you can on YouTube, and always remember, I'm Oscar, and he's Felix. Oh man, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs>